We have a special guest uh, that you are going to hear from right now. It is one of the hottest new artists out right now. His name is Darian Saffron. He's from Strange Music. He has a new project called Call Logs that is out right now. Yeah. What's going on, sir? How you doing? What's good, y'all? How are everybody doing? How's everybody New Year's going? How'd that go? That's good. How was yours? It was cool. I mean, I really, I really just worked. <laughs> to oh. be honest, I was, I was working on New Year's. Uh, just went out, you know, had some fun with some friends, and then came back home, and we was up to like seven. Just working on new material. Wow, okay, I was up till studio. yeah, I was up to seven drunk. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say, Darvio here, I ain't leave my house <laughs> till about five o'clock in the morning. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we were, we was drunk too, but you know, we was we was just like uh, productive drunk. You know, <laughs> yeah, good. I like that. I like that. I feel it. I need to use that one. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. you know, obviously you're a newer artist. Um, technically, it would be considered underground. Um, for those listeners that we have that's not too familiar with the underground hip hop scene, uh, just go ahead and give like a little quick introduction. Your name, where you're from, uh, obviously who you're, yeah. what label you represent, and whatnot. Yeah, well, um, my name is Darian Saffron. I'm uh, I'm 21 years old from St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, <clears throat> I'm signed to Tech Nine, which is a uh, strange music. Which is well, people more uh, know of Tech Nine, so I, I tell people I'm signed with Tech Nine. Uh, he actually swooped me up about. I think it was a year ago, a year and a half ago, I was actually homeless in St. Louis. And um, I was just hustling, trying to uh, make this music work. And then Connections uh, met up with different Connections and, and blessed me with the opportunity to have a deal. So now I'm signed and just working on my dreams. So, you know, just been hustling for real. Nice. Okay, you actually uh, kind of led me right into my next question. Uh, I, I had noticed. Now, in our email correspondence when we had spoke, um, I had told you that, uh, you know, for those people out there that don't know, Tech Nine refers to his fans as technicians. Um, I've been a Tech Nine fan for probably 15 years now. Um, and I noticed in, right, right. in your press release, um, you had mentioned that you went from homeless to being where you are now. How did that come about? Like, did you yeah. try to um, reach out to Strange Music or did they come find you? Like, how how did all that uh, develop? Well, it was actually, it was, a, it was, a, it was just a big role of connection. So, um, it, 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 it's, it's a long story, but it's not. So basically I was with another label, an independent label in St. Louis before I got with uh strange. And, um, at the time they didn't, you know, they really didn't want me messing with nobody. They was like, they tried to keep all the connections to themselves because, you know, they knew that if I got the connections that I can move on my own, especially in the way the music is today, you know what I'm saying? It's not mm -hmm. like you really need anybody. So say, because anybody can really, you know, it's like business almost. It's like you can create your own business, just put it on the internet and sell it, you know. So, um, but basically, the, that situation, I knew it was going to come to an end because of the way that they were moving and the way that I knew I needed to move in order for my career to get off the ground anyway. So um, there was a connection. Uh, he was a producer, and the producer, he, his name was Fred. That producer actually is Stevie Stone, tight man. And I made a song with them called Boo Thang back in the day. And that song, actually, uh, Stevie ended up hearing it, and he ended up wanting it for his album. So I was like, all right, cool, let's just sell it to him. So that's the first time we dealt with Strange, because Stevie Stone is a tech nine artist as well. Right. So that record we just gave to them. And at the time, I was still under contract with the other label, so Strange never reached out to me or nothing like that, which I didn't expect them to either, but I just looked at it like, cool, I can get a quick little placement, get my name rolling somewhere. And then later on, I kept working with Frizz later on because, like I said, I got those connections on my own. I went ahead and I was like, yo, I'm going I'm to make sure I, I know who y'all is and we going to, you know what I'm saying, we going to woo, woo, woo. So I got those connects. And then later on in the uh, line about after I was done with that situation, we, we made a few more records. Uh, I think we made Fall in Love with it and Body Rock. And Stevie Stone also wanted those two records. So we moved those to them as well. After those two records came, I think it was the radio lady at Strange. Her name is Paula. She heard the Fall in Love with It record with Stevie, and she was like, that's the record we need Stevie on. But she was like, who is that kid singing? Who is that? We, I want to know. Y'all need to sign him. Y'all need to sign him. So later on, they hit me up, and they were like, yeah, our radio lady insists that we call you, and da 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 So and that, that landed us here. It's just a whole bunch of connect to connect to connect, basically. Nice. Okay. That's what's up. We're talking with Darian Saffron from Strange Music. Um, and speaking of that, 
you know, I, I really found it interesting uh, when I listened to your music. Um, you you have a lot of really strong hit quality songs, like songs that could get played on the radio like 40 times a day type songs. And it's interesting because your music is not what the average person would usually associate with strange music. So was there, right. what was that experience like? Like when you got there, was it, was there an adjustment period? Was there a culture class or did they just kind of embrace you and just say, you know what, we're, we're going to go in a different direction with this guy's music because he's so talented. Well, you know, I mean, strange music, they, they make like, I like to put it like this, like strange music likes to focus on still, they still have the talent of music. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I put it like, uh, if you, if you go into underground music, um, more than, uh, often the underground appreciates music for what, uh, for what music was appreciated for about, you know, people that can't adapt to new sounds, they usually go into the underground sound. Most of the older heads don't like new music because they find it talentless. You know right. what I'm saying? They find like it's not hard to make the new music. Right. But, you know, um, when I went to Strange, I almost in a way I tried to show them, I was like, look, like, you have to understand that the new music that I do I do music that can kind of speak to everybody. I try to speak to, cause I was brought up, I was brought up on old school music. Like I was brought up on Motown music. My father brought me in and made me, he brought me up like Joe Jackson and I was singing uh, Risa Franklin, Jackie Wilson, right, uh, right. Tina Turner. I was, you know, at the Apollo, you know, like I did, I, I was singing Motown. That's what I brought. I was brought up on soul. So I have a sense of uh classic to my music that I always try to bring into it because I've looked at the blueprints and I've looked and said, okay, this has never changed from the sixties to the seventies to the eighties to the nineties to now. It's never changed. This has always worked. You know what I'm saying? It's always been this little bit of classicness that works. And that's the thing that works good with me and strange music is strange music likes to keep talent in their music, but they also want to find a way that they can bring that talent and still be able to speak to everybody. They want to be able to speak to everybody. And then when I came in and, and, and they told me, they was like, yo, we, we want you to uh, kind of be our lead uh, for the mainstream. We want, we want you to kind of be able to uh, transition us to show everybody that strange music can be underground and be mainstream and still not be selling out either. You know what I mean? So right. See, I like that's that. basically when I came here, that's, that's what the situation was. And we, and we've had like a lot of talks and discussions. There's been a lot of things that strange in themselves, even the way that they move as a business that we've had to, uh, kind of, uh, just, just be like, okay, we have to adapt because the kids are moving differently now. And I've had to show them like, you guys are used to having this fan base of Lights Underground Music, which is predominantly a little bit older, but now that you're dealing with these kids, you're dealing with the mainstream, you're dealing with the way the kids are moving now, we have to kind of move differently all together. Right. Well, and you know, it's funny um, because I'm, and, and my co-host noticed, I'm a, I'm a mainstream dude, like flat out. I'm a flat out mainstream dude. And when E, yeah. when E was introduced to your music, he was, he came to me, he was like, yo man, you got to hear this guy. He's like, I know, I know you're going to like this guy. And when I heard it, I was blown away. I'm like, he's on, he's on what label? Right. Who is he with? I'm like, man, that was, man, the, the stuff that I heard from you is unbelievable, bro. Oh man, thanks, bro. Hey, what what you hear? <laughs> I'm curious. Uh, well, at first I had told him to look up the brilliant EP. Um, uh, yeah. And then uh, this will kind of lead us into the next question Jessica's got for you. Uh, your mixtape that you dropped last month, uh, the call offs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's what I yeah, that's yeah. what I had heard, yeah. and I was like. Wow. I actually like, showed that to both of them yeah. Yeah, at the uh, same when time. we were in studio like the yeah. day after it dropped. And I'm like, I'm telling you, y'all are going to like this. And like Darvio said, he was blown away. Jessica was like, man, I like this. So we it all, was hit after hit, hit yeah. after hit. <laughs> it definitely was. I, I have your station on iHeartRadio now and I listen to it quite frequently. You're you're an amazing artist. You you really are. You are talented. It's 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 crazy. Thank you. Thank so, you. I appreciate it. I really appreciate that for real. So with that being said, what inspired Call Logs? Well, I mean, I, I put it like, okay, so Call Logs in general, um, it was more like I wanted it to be, it, there was a few different reasons. And, mm -hmm. and the first reason was, is I wanted to show the label that 
I know, like, it was more of a, uh, it was a test run for the label as well. I was trying to show them, I was like, look, I know what I'm capable of doing, mm-hmm. but I'm telling them that we need to dumb it down in a way that's not necessarily dumbed down to where it takes the talent out, but it dumbs down to where the kids can actually gravitate towards it. Because if things are always so perfect, it's not going to go. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. the things in call logs aren't perfect. Nothing in call logs, it, it has a raw feel to it on purpose. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, I did it intentionally. I didn't want the singing to sound so perfect. I didn't want the, the mixing to sound so traditional. Because nowadays, what's going is kids are actually gravitating towards these sounds that are more like, almost like a kid, anybody could have made it. Because that's, uh, uh, it's where the music business is kind of going because everybody can just grab a laptop and go get a uh, Fruity Loops and go get Auto Tune mm-hmm. and put it on their voice and make these songs. Now, necessarily for the music business itself, it doesn't mean that talent is. It's kind of taking the talent out of the game, but in the same sense, it's bringing a different type of talent that wasn't there before that kids are starting to. Uh, uh, appreciate you know what I'm saying like yeah. kids are appreciating the talent of bringing a swag to a song not necessarily the lyrics not necessarily the uh, the vocal talent but it's the emotion and it's the it's the way that you get them turned up the, right. Right. The, how it the makes feeling, them feel you know right. what I mean that's right. Yeah, that's what they're going for. And I was, and I was like, look, let me show y'all. That was the first intention of call logs. Number two is call logs has actually been my, that, that's my first mixtape. That's my first full project that I ever was like, okay, I think that my project is finally ready. Cause I've actually been working on a mixtape since I was 14 and I've never got to the point to where I was like, I got a finished project that I think I could put out. Like, mm-hmm. this is it. And I finally got to that point. And, um, because usually before I've always had projects that I thought were ready, but the, I've never been in a situation to where I can release it on a platform to where I felt like it would go. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I finally felt like, okay, call laws. I think that we can finally put this out and, uh, and, and get people hit to it. And it would all work at the, at, at the right time. Cause, uh, cause most of the other labels I've been with before, like I said, I've, 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 I've spoke to strange and I told him, I was like, yo, we can't sit on music for a year. We can't do that no more. That's not, you can't do that. And I feel like a lot of labels are messing their artists up like that because they're going by this old traditional, um, this blueprint that they go by that says, well, we, we put it out like this and then we do record sales and we go by the numbers and da 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 And I'm like, no, the kids are moving way too fast for y'all to be doing that. By the time you put that out, that sound is going to be changed. Yep. 100% right, another right. sound. Or somebody, and you just yep. wasted a whole album. Yeah, yep. or somebody else going to have that same exact sound. Yep. So uh-huh. <clears throat> that's what I was telling. Her. I was like, I was like, we got to do it. So that's another, the, the, really, I was like, yo, like, just trust me, just let's put it out and let's rock with it, see what it do. And that's what I was like. Yeah. More more so. So earlier you had made a comment yeah. about how uh, one of the reasons why they brought you on was because they wanted to so- show that <clears throat> strange music could not only be underground, but they could be mainstream. Now, anybody who uh, has followed Tech 9 uh, over the years, they know that Tech has always maintained. He's always said, Tech will never go mainstream. Mainstream will go Tech. Uh, with that being yeah, said, exactly. I, it, it almost feels like now, now tech on his own is already mainstream has been going towards tech. And I feel like adding you to that, in essence, is another step in mainstream going tech due to adding an artist like yourself. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Um, absolutely. So uh, I know earlier we were speaking a little bit and you had mentioned that for the next four weeks, every Tuesday, you'll be dropping two new songs. Uh, let let people know uh, where they can catch these songs, uh, if they got to download them, if they could listen to them for free. What, what's the deal with that? Well, really, I was just, this is just something I'm doing for the fans personally because I know that, you know, people are still getting uh, familiar with me. And, you know, I, I, I basically what I was going to do is I was just going to put it on my SoundCloud, let everybody, you know, have it, which is going to be Darian, it's Darian underscore Saffron. And um, I was basically just going to go on my fan page and every Tuesday, I was going to call it Two Song Tuesday, <laughs> just for four weeks because <laughs> I don't want to do it every two weeks because I want to over flood people in to where it's like not as special. But right. I was going to say for the next month, for every for every Tuesday, I'm going to drop two songs. I'm going to put it on my fan page. I'm going to put it on Twitter. I'm going to put it on everywhere. It's just going to be on my SoundCloud and, you know, just let people get whatever they really want. And it's just going to be songs that I just make during the week too. 
You okay. know, like it's not going to be premeditated. These songs aren't already done. Like I'm literally about to, as soon as I get off the phone with y'all, I'm hitting up my homie. We're just going to go to his crib and make two songs and mix two <laughs> songs and just work for real. <laughs> nice, nice. So you coming from being homeless to now, you know, a mm-hmm. a artist, a huge artist. What advice would you give to kids who are striving to become artists who may have things like being homeless or, you know, um, being poor and poverty? What advice would you give to them to keep pushing towards their dreams? Don't stop because what I've come to realize is even though, Okay, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm eating pizza all my I was about to say, but, sound something okay. real good Even, over there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so smacking. I'm smacking this shit. <laughs> Look, what, what I would say, what I would say is, don't stop. And mm-hmm. I'm, I know it sounds cliche. But this is what I've come to realize in life in general. Being from St. Louis even, not even just the fact of me being homeless, but being from St. Louis, being from one of the most urban, uh, one of the most, uh, you know, crime-driven uh, cities, Mm-hmm. In, in America, being from a city like this, it's kind of realized I used to think when I was younger, see, the thing, the thing that I had to grow up with is, is I was broke. My dad was broke. My father's side of the family was actually rich. So I got to see both sides. And I used to always tear myself down and be like, why did God put me here? Why, why I don't have the opportunity that my other cousins have? And I don't got this. I don't got that. And I've come to realize that the struggle that I had to deal with made me so much more it just made me so much it gave me so much more power and so mm-hmm. much more know-how and, and everything that i've been through that made me get here that i it made me the soldier that i am you understand what i'm saying yeah. so it's not it's necessarily it's a blessing almost to go through those things because you get a perk in your life that don't nobody else have that they might have it if they went through it but you get to be stronger than them. And then when you get to where you at, then you can say, hey, but guess what? I made it through this. I don't think none of y'all made it through what I made it through, period. So if anybody's going through that and it makes them feel discouraged, like they're not going to get to that next point, also remember God put you through those situations to make you stronger for whatever battle you coming up against next. All right, man. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I had to come and realize. Preach. And uh, right. it, it was hard, though. It was hard. I mean, we was I was out like, at the at the bus station, it's cold. Like in the middle, it's cold. I'm talking about on, in the west side where where you don't want to be at three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it was it was it was not what's up. But I also I also look back on those days and I'm like, hey, if it wasn't for that, I would not make the type of music I make now at all. Right, right. Um, now for <clears throat> uh, people who may not be familiar with your music, what uh, if you could? And if you could put a similar type of style or maybe compare yourself to some somebody else just to kind of get, okay, he, he says he sounds like this person. Let me ch- check his music out. Who would you kind of maybe compare yourself or style similar as? Well, I don't, I usually don't compare myself to other artists. Now I've had people tell me before, it's like a good mix of Drake, mm-hmm. Chris Brown and Tory Lanez all mixed mm-hmm. together. Yeah, that's yep. what I told you. And then yeah. people... Yeah, yeah, people people say that. I've had people tell me that my tone reminds them of Michael Jackson, but my delivery reminds them of a rapper mm-hmm. in a way that's like it mixes it mixes very well together. So it it has different uh I have different vibes, you know what I'm saying? So it's kind of it's kind of hard to direct it towards any one artist, but if you mix all those together, you kind of get a a a, fo- a formula that creates me, you yeah. know? Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. We're talking with Darian Saffron from Strange Music. His project, Call Logs, is out right now. And what? let everybody know real quick uh, any other projects that you're working on that they should be looking out for, as well as let them know how to get in contact with you on social media, your Twitter, and all of that good stuff. Absolutely. Well, you know, like I said, I'm doing two, I'm doing two song Tuesdays. You can just go to my facebook or my twitter or anything you can find my facebook that's uh darian saffron d-a-r-r-e-i-n not i-e-n everybody thinks it's i-e-n but it's e-i-n so d-a-r-r-e-i-n space s-a-f-r-o-n my twitter would be darian s-t-l d-a-r-r-e-i-n s-t-l same with instagram and if you guys go to my soundcloud that's where you'll hear the two song tuesday that's d-a-r-r-e-i-n underscore s-a-f-r-o-n for my soundcloud and yeah so i'm doing the two song tuesdays i got an album coming out very soon we got beats from scott storch on there we got a couple beats from league of stars we got features from uh you know tech we got a whole bunch of uh 
things coming out on the album that's going to be coming out within the next few months and i also got a few more mixtapes that me and my producers are working up right now so we got a lot coming nice so if i go follow you on instagram you're gonna follow me back right <laughs> of course. Oh, okay. just just make sure make sure you let me know who you are though, because people are crazy, and you know, they're oh, yeah. to get all type of so stuff. Out, so I got to make sure. Basically, hop in his DM and be like, "Yo, this." Yeah. <laughs> I'm a slide of your DMs. <laughs> <laughs> That's absolutely, man. It's nice. It's nice talking to y'all, though, man. I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm just over here eating pizza rolls and chilling. I was just working on a beat before y'all called too. So That's crazy. <laughs> okay. Um, one last thing, uh, I noticed we forgot to do that. If somebody wanted to go download uh, call logs, where would they uh, be able to do that at? Well, it's at, y'all can actually do it anywhere. You can do it on Spotify, you can do it on Pandora, you can do it on Hot New Hip Hop, because Hot New Hip Hop actually premiered call logs and mixtapes, so That's shout out to Hot New Hip Hop for doing that. Go to yeah, go to iTunes, you know, just look up. All you got to do is look up Darian Saffron call logs. And I'm anywhere you go. And if they don't have it where you're trying, like if it's not up on Spin Rail, if it's not up on my mixtapes, because I don't know if the label has got that all situated yet, I do know it's on Spotify, Pandora, uh, uh, iTunes, and uh, YouTube, and Hot New Hip Hop. By the way, I think the artwork for that was dope, by the way. Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, thanks, man. That's actually, uh, we actually, uh, we bought those phones from a thrift store, and me and my homie, I, we spray painted it pink, and we put like little drips of white in there, and then we had our professional photographer that we knew. She's dope, super dope homegirl of ours. She shot it in the bathroom, and we put like a black light next to it, and we just took shots of it. So, yeah, we, we do everything. We do most of our stuff in-house. We just like to be artistic. All right, that's what's up, man. Hey, thanks for for spending some time with us, man. We really appreciate it. And what we'll do as we're getting oh, ready no, to go man. to break, we'll make sure that we play play a clip of your song, and we'll close the show out with a clip of your song as well. Absolutely, absolutely. Thanks, man. Thanks y'all for having me for sure. Oh, All no right, problem. Thank nice you, talking Darian. to you. All right, yeah, I'll be safe. All right, stay tuned. We'll be back with more of the Outlaws. I've been getting money all day. Ooh, you should off with me. Oh, what's your man say? Cause he ain't putting it down like he's supposed to Now that me, baby That me, baby That me, baby That me, baby Oh, that me, baby That me, baby That me, baby The Outlaws Radio Show On the FCB Radio Network